there, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book review for Wool by Hugh Howey. But before we go ahead and get on into the review, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new bookish content. I post new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, and sometimes other days throughout the week. Also, don't forget to check down in the description box below for links to my social media, my Buddy Read Discord, and my Patreon, where you can be entered into winning book giveaways. First off, I just want to let you guys know that there is like a storm raging outside my window right now. So if you hear wind or rain or anything like that, it's from the storm that's blowing by. I will be talking about spoilery sections to this story. So if you not, have not yet read Wool, then make sure that you are checking the timestamps down below so that you do not get spoiled for anything. The premise of Wool, this is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi adult story and it follows a world where everybody lives in these underground silos and the whole premise is that if you go above ground that it is not safe and you will die, that there are these noxious fumes and all of this radiation and stuff that will kill you. So even if you are to go above ground for any reason, which you are not allowed to, it's completely taboo, it's used as a punishment, then you have to wear these suits that can only semi-protect you. So it's kind of like outside the silo is not discussed, it's not talked about, it's got this very bad reputation and people are only to focus on the silo and being productive members of the society inside the silo. The silos are very vast, they're autonomous, um, they provide everything that one needs in order to live. They have supplies, they have electricity, they have computers, they are able to grow and farm. So it is essentially our world except underground. And they, they don't have access to any of the things that we take for granted, like looking at the sky, looking at the stars, seeing the clouds, all of that. The whole interesting thing about the story, in my opinion, is that it's never revealed to the reader exactly how humanity got to this point in time. What exactly happened above ground that caused it to be uninhabitable? Who the heck built the silos? How do they function so well? And I feel like as the series progresses, because there are three books in the series, we will slowly learn the history um, of what built up to the current events, which is what personally captivated my interest. We are following a main character named Juliet, and Juliet works in mechanical. And what's interesting about this silo is that it's not a small silo. It is 140 something floors. So imagine like 140 floor building and there's no elevators at all in the silo. So the only way for people to get up and down these floors is to literally walk the spiraling staircase, which is mind boggling to me. So the people that live in like certain sectors of the silo, um, they're not they're not separated really, but who the heck would want to walk up or down a hundred flights of stairs in order to get to another part of the silo? So it actually works as a separation mechanism between the different, I don't want to say classes of people, but to, between the different groups of people. Because for example, where Juliet lives is mechanical is all the way at the bottom of the silo. And they uh, basically work on the mechanics of the silo, the, the water filtration and, and pumping the generators to make electricity and all the stuff that makes the silo mechanically sound. And they, they are noted for their job as mechanics by the color of uniforms that they were that they wear. So it's not really presented to be a sort of class system, but then you have the mayor who lives all the way at the top of the silo as well as, you know, the the judges and the law enforcers and all of that. So while it's not really presented, at least I didn't take it that way that where you were located in the silo and what job you had uh, communicated your class necessarily. There is that inadvertent feeling that that type of system and setup in this establishment gave me. So Juliet works in mechanical and she is actually asked by the current mayor to be promoted to sheriff. And what happens is that Juliet existed in an investigation down in mechanical and another deputy that really, she really stood out to him because of how meticulous she was and how helpful she was with the investigation. So when something happens to the current sheriff, she is asked to replace him and begrudgingly she accepts. Believe it or not, Juliet only works as sheriff for a short time and she starts to learn about some unscrupulous things that are happening with the silo. There are some people close to her that end up dying and it just is fishy and something's going on and starts and she starts to uncover all of these secrets that people are personally withholding in the silo to keep all of the citizens compliant and not asking questions about how they got there in the future and the past of you know their current earth and why it's not inhabitable. 
So this novel absolutely has a great setup and a great premise because the author slowly reveals breadcrumbs of information to keep us wondering exactly how humanity got to this point. And as the book progresses, the big picture slowly and slowly unfolds to the reader more and more and more, as well as Juliet, because we're following her and she's uncovering the secrets, which instead reveals it to the reader. And then we also have information about the antagonist. The antagonist is named is Bernard, and he is the head of the IT department. And he is definitely not what he seems. He is definitely one who is all about controlling others and having power over others. And we learn more secrets that he's holding or withholding from, you know, the people of the silo. So there's a lot of in inner turmoil going on within this silo. There's a lot of power struggles. There is a lot of political struggles. We have some people that are being murdered because they're asking too many questions. And just a note on that, if you, any citizen of the silo starts to question, you know, why can't we go outside? What happened outside? It is actually a punishment to have them killed. <laughs> And how they have them killed is that they actually put them outside. They put them in this uniform that is purposely meant to degrade once they get outside and then they are exposed to the elements which are supposedly poisonous and they die. And they call it a cleaning because one of the last vestiges that they have to present to the community as a member is to clean like the cameras on the outside of the silo. So I just felt that was a very strange dynamic and it almost kind of reminds me of Shirley Jack Jackson's The Lottery. Um, spoiler, if you haven't read that short story where people actually sacrifice themselves for the better of the community. Yes, these people who are sent to clean don't really have any choice. They can't fight back against their punishment, but they still go out there and clean the cameras and, and um, the sensors and things like that, which do allow the silo to function in a certain way. So it was just a, an interesting dynamic and, and the whole cleaning had a lot to do with the um, culture and ideas of the silo. So I would definitely say the two main characters are Bernard and Juliet and then we do get introduced to another character named Lucas and I really didn't know if Lucas was going to have a big part in this book but he actually does. Um, I would say probably towards like the middle to second half and he in my person, personal opinion is going to evolve more into a rebel. So he's one of those characters that learns the truth and realizes the wrongness in it and decides to rebel um, after I'm um, trying to do the right thing, whereas Juliet from the beginning realizes what's wrong and, and tries to rebel. So they're just a little bit too, um, too dynamics. And then there is also like the hint of a relationship or romance between these two characters that could possibly develop. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. I want to discuss a couple of the likes that I had for this book. So we'll definitely say the world building. Yes, like this idea of living in a possible underground silo and surviving because the world isn't inhabitable is nothing new, really. But I still think that Hugh Howie was able to make it his own. Um, just how self-sufficient the silo was and how the people functioned within it was excellently, excellently described and actually very believable. And I just felt myself immersed in this world. And as the book goes on and we get like more expansion of the world, I just found it more and more interesting. And um, he was making me as the reader ask questions about how humanity got to this point. So he did a really good job with the world building. I also really liked Juliet as a main character. She is like one of those people that is very methodical, very meticulous. She thinks in her head, you know, cause and effect type person. If this thing happened, what could have caused it? She's constantly asking questions. She definitely is persistent and determined. And I just felt she like she was an excellent protagonist. She had her faults, but she was very much someone you would want to root for. And I can definitely see like her own hero's journey uh, developing in this story. So I'm excited to see how she takes on like the rest of the series. Now I want to talk about some of the things that I didn't like and I will be including some spoilers in this so make sure that you're checking the timestamps down below. But um, there were some points of the book that were fairly slow. So Juliet was sent to clean by Bernard because she was asking too many questions and she ends up against all odds surviving outside in her suit and ends up finding another silo. And what we learn is that there are actually a ton of different silos and only certain people know that other silos exist and there are radio frequencies that they're able to talk to each other, um, which the normal like common folk don't know anything about that technology. So Julia comes upon this abandoned silo and she finds out that there is one person remaining and then she finds out that there are children um, like the offspring of, of the previous inhabitants, obviously, that are still living. So there's maybe like less than 10 people that are living in this silo. 
And I wasn't like the biggest fan of that part of the book. I understand why Hugh Howie had to add it because he was like giving us more information about, you know, this world and what could happen if the people learn the truth and have an uprising and then there's an all out, you know, war in the silo. Um, so I can understand why he had it, but I just felt like that part of the story was a bit drawn out. Another thing I didn't like so much about this book is while I did enjoy it very, very much, I did feel like the story was a bit predictable. Um, it was very easy early on from the beginning to see what was going to happen, um, who the bad guy was, you know, it just nothing about the reveals was overly, I guess, surprising to me. I personally found it predictable, but that still didn't take away really of my enjoyment of the book. All in all, I really enjoyed Wool. I was presently surprised. I really enjoyed the prose. I love the world building. I really enjoyed all of the characters and I'm excited to learn more about this world. I ended up giving Wool four out of five stars and I do recommend it if you have not yet picked it up. And I'm super excited to watch the Apple TV adaptation of this, which comes out May 5th. I'm not a huge TV watcher, um, so I don't know if I'll like start it and continue with the whole like series because I'd rather read than watch TV, but I would like to at least see how Apple attempts to uh, translate the book into the show. All right, you guys, that is it for my review of Wool by Hugh Howey. Let me know in the comments if you read this book and what you thought of it, and I will see y'all in another video soon. Goodbye.